statement. I'll tell you a little bit more. This material actually has some traits that make it seem almost too good to be true. It's sustainable. It's a sustainable material that is processed all in water and at room temperature. And it's biodegradable with a clock, so you can watch it dissolve instantaneously in a glass of water or have it stable for years. It's edible. Uh, it's implantable in the human body without causing any immune response. It actually uh, gets reintegrated in the body. And it's technological, so it can do things like uh, microelectronics, uh, and maybe photonics do. And the material looks something like this. Uh, in fact, this, this material you see is clear and transparent. This is, the components of this material are just water and protein. So this material is, is silk. I mentioned that the film is also technological, and so what does that mean? It means that, uh, that, that you can uh, you can interface it with some of the things that are typical of technology like, like microelectronics and, and nanoscale technology. And the image of the DVD here is just to, to illustrate a point that, uh, that silk, uh, silk follows very, very subtle topographies of the surface, which means that it can replicate features on the nanoscale. So it would be able to replicate the information that is on, that is on the DVD. And we can store information in this film of water and protein. So we tried something out, and we wrote a message in a piece of silk, which is right here, and the message is over there. And much like in the DVD, you can read it out optically. And this requires a stable hand, so this is why I decided to do it on stage in front of 1,000 people. Uh, so, uh, so let me see. So as you see the, the film going transparently through there, and then... And... My name is Jen Bourbon, and what you just saw is an excerpt from Theo Amanetto's TED Talk on Silk. I show it to you because I'm inspired by what he just demonstrated, inscribed silk films. If you have a health condition serious enough to monitor at all times, like cancer, the silk sensor implanted just under your skin might offer a less invas invasive way long term to visually monitor your health in the future. The nanopattern surface of the film allows this bioactive sensor to work as an optical device, one that can be monitored visually through the skin. Next slide. Next slide. When I first encountered one of these silk films in Fio's office, I held it in my hand and projected the Tufts logo, a portrait of a Victorian lady, and clip art onto the wall. The content gap surprised me. I mean, it's Intense and strange to live with cancer and the silk a silk sensor inside you. Knowing what's written, inscribed, or layered there could be quite powerful, even transformative. It could create a vital imaginative space. That imaginative space is something poetry and art are poised to speak to in a meaningful way. Poems are considered frivolous, but they have jobs to do. They offer up a space to make sense of not just language, but being. The word text comes from the word textile. As a poet and visual artist, I often work at the intersection of the two. What we think of as textiles, for most people, means clothes. But textiles can cross boundaries. My first weaving teacher designed weave structures for heart valves. A silk film inscribed nanoscale is a mind-blowing context to see language embedded in outside the body. And it's a tremendously meaningful context to imagine inside the body. I want to think about what is written there. I think we're uh, stay there for one sec. In my experimental book, The Silk Poems, I want to explore the cultural, scientific, and linguistic complexities of silk, mending, and the body on nano-imprinted silk film. The pages will be combined into a transparent book, a single small sheet with every poem present that can be read, projected with fiber optic light. I'm trying to redefine what writing might be for me in this new context and why. For example, I'm thinking about how poetic forms might be shaped by the structure of silk. At the DNA level, the building block of silk is the beta sheet. A beta strand self-assembles like a weft thread in a weaving. Beta sheets are often compared to an ancient Greek method of writing called a bostrophedon, which means literally as the ox turns because the line reverses as a plow turns in alternating directions. If a bostrophedon is written on a transparent surface, to read the alternately reversed lines, one would enact a spiral. This form of writing will in some way become part of the book. 
So there's a lot I want to bring into the conversation. Sarah culture spans 5,000 years and interconnects radically different cultures, languages, and textile traditions all over the world. I'm thinking about the role of the silk sensor as both a harbinger and a protector, talismans and the manuscripts that they conceal. Looking for a poem in an archive is a funny thing. <laughs> I'm looking at inscribed silk textiles, innovations in biomedical research and nano implants, and ways to rethink Sarah culture now. This map reflects where I've already done research. And this one shows upcoming trips in more than 50 international archives and labs. I'm looking for more foundations and institutions to partner with, research fellowships, residencies, and great conversations. Thank you very much.